Hi there, my name is Will and welcome to a deep dive of workflow components. Over this series, I'm gonna be walking you through each of the components used to build powerful workflows in Kestra and how you can get the most out of them. Today, we're gonna to be starting off with flows and understanding how they work and how you can get the most out of those. A flow is a container of your orchestration logic. This is where all of your tasks, inputs and outputs and error handling will go to create powerful automations. Let's jump into an example to see what that might look like. We can see all of our flows inside of the flows page. They are organized by labels, when they were executed last, as well as namespaces. Let's jump into the example here to see all of the properties a flow might have. As you can see, flows are defined in YAML, but you can also configure them using the interactive interface. So here I can see, I can change the type, I can edit, see which properties are actually required and which ones are not required. And it will give me a nice description of what they are too. If you wanna see the full documentation for each type, you can do that as well directly in the platform. As we can see here, flows have three required properties. They need an ID, the name of the flow, a namespace, how you're gonna organize the flow inside of Kestra, as well as tasks. These are the steps that your workflow are gonna take. But you can also see there are a huge number of optional properties as well, such as descriptions, labels, inputs, variables, task defaults, and triggers, and many more. We're gonna be having a separate video on each of these properties so you can get the most out of them. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't already, join our Slack community where you can chat with us there. In the next episode, we're gonna be talking about how you can use tasks within your flows to create powerful automations.